Yo, and welcome back to Forward Together. Thanks for listening. On this podcast, I'm reading the 2019 platform of the Green Party of Canada, and I'm sharing it as nine easy-to-listen-to episodes. I really hope this podcast makes learning about our platform simple and easy. Our platform is a clear vision for Canada, and it has so many great ideas that's been so great to share, and I can't wait to share more today. Not everyone likes reading long documents, and not everyone can find the time to read something as long as this platform. And that's exactly why I'm doing this podcast. We're also committed to being inclusive in how we share our platform, and we want to make our platform accessible to as many Canadians as possible. The idea of this podcast is to give you an audiobook of the Green Party platform, so you can learn what the Green Party is all about, while you're on your way to work, or out for a run, or whatever you love to do while you listen to podcasts. Now, to get the platform yourself, go to greenparty.ca slash platform and you can look up who your local Green Party candidate is at greenparty.ca slash candidates, where all you have to do is put in your postal code. However you're listening, welcome, and we'd love to hear from you. So you can email us at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com. If you have any platform questions or feedback, we really want to hear from you. We'll read everything that you send us and do our best to reply as well. We're hoping to be able to share some of the questions and feedback as well. So if you'd prefer we don't share your comments, just mention that in your message. Okay, let's get started with episode 9. In this episode, we finish our reading of the Green Party of Canada's platform by covering the green vision for good governance, as well as international relations and defense. Good governance. At the heart of our democratic system of government is a relationship of trust and respect between Canadians and the representatives they elect. We expect those representatives to act responsibly, with integrity, honesty, and intelligence. When they do not, trust and respect frays, and democracy falters. We must protect that relationship with all our might. As we've seen in other countries, a few loose strands, if pulled, can unravel the whole fabric of society. All governments seem to have their ethical challenges. Jean Chrétien had the sponsorship scandal, Stephen Harper the Duffy affair, and now Justin Trudeau with the snc Lavalin affair. The recent report of the Ethics Commissioner shines a harsh light on the inner workings of a Prime Minister's office to which a powerful corporation had easy access, to the point of getting legislation passed that would allow it to avoid criminal prosecution and pressuring the Attorney General to use it. While this may be the worst case, corporate influence on ministers' offices and federal boards is entrenched. The Green Party is committed to honest, ethical, caring leadership. All the policies set out in this platform represent a deep commitment to ethics and government and a democracy that works for all citizens. Integrity and Ethics in Government there are a host of reforms that could strengthen the checks against abuse of power and influence peddling in Parliament and federal institutions, and make the House of Commons a more constructive, cooperative, and effective institution. A green government will introduce integrity into government legislation. Direct the Speaker to enforce existing rules to minimize the power of party whips over individual members of Parliament. Remove the requirement for party leaders to sign candidate nominations, accepting proof of a fair and open process at the local Electoral District Association level. Strengthen the role and protect the independence of parliamentary officers, including the Ombudsman, the Auditor General, the Ethics Commissioner, 
the Information Commissioner, the Commissioner of Official Languages, and the Parliamentary Budget Officer. Strengthen the Conflict of Interest Act to include financial and other penalties for breaking the law. Set up an all-party commission to select a five-member board that will make decisions regarding governor and council appointments and select candidates for parliamentary officers. Impose strict conflict of interest screening criteria for appointments to federal regulatory boards and agencies, minimizing the potential for bias and preferential access by the regulated industry. Replace the secretive Board of Internal Economy with an independent oversight committee to review MPs' salaries, expenses, and office budgets. Establish a public investigations office reporting to Parliament to provide clearer and permanent operating rules for such investigations. Strengthen the Lobbying Act to require greater transparency and prevent revolving doors between political life, the public service, and lobbying. Reaffirm the independence and integrity of the public service and strengthen whistleblower protections for public service employees. Launch a federal public inquiry into what the RCMP and other federal agencies knew about money laundering in BC casinos and why they did not expose the growing corruption. Transparency in Government The Access to Information Act, ATI, giving individuals the right to access records under the control of a federal government institution, has a number of exceptions, including cabinet confidence, that are used increasingly to limit access. To ensure open and transparent government, a green government will strengthen the ATI. Expand access to information about the government and its activities by scrapping all fees except the filing fee. Provide enforceable deadlines so that requests are processed in a timely manner. Authorize the Information Commissioner to order the release of information. Place the Administration of Parliament, their Prime Minister's Office, and Ministers' Offices within the scope of the ATI. Override all exemptions so that public interest comes before the secrecy of the government. Provide for exclusions based on claims of cabinet confidences to be reviewed by the Information Commissioner. Require public officials to create a public record to document their actions and decisions regarding all ATI requests. Protection of Privacy The flip side of increasing government transparency is protecting the privacy rights of Canadians. According to Privacy Commissioner Danielle Terren, Canada's privacy legislation is, quote, sadly falling behind what is the norm in other countries, end quote. A green government will also curtail the surveillance powers of security agencies and prohibit the surreptitious reach of corporations. Change the law to require the communications security establishment in CSIS to get a warrant before intruding on Canadians' communications. Prohibit the routine surveillance of Canadians who protest against the government and the sharing of protesters and NGO staff information with the National Energy Board and others. Significantly increase the powers of the Privacy Commissioner, in particular to protect identity and personal data and to enforce privacy laws. Require companies to grant access to all information they hold on an individual and to delete personal information from company databases when requested by that person. Individuals would have the right to be forgotten. Establish a parliamentary inquiry to recommend modernizing privacy laws governing the burgeoning Internet of Things. Create mandatory data breach reporting for all government departments, companies, banks, and political parties. Regulate Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms to ensure that only actual people with verifiable identities are able to publish on these platforms. Prohibit cyber surveillance and bulk collection of data by intelligence and police agencies. Require that internet service providers may only release data when required to do so by warrant, except in emergency situations. Require political parties to follow the Privacy Act without exception. Reforming Democratic Institutions Integrity in the elections process 
is foundational to the relationship of trust and respect on which democracy is built. A green government will ensure that the electoral system produces a parliament that represents the will of the electorate and that the electoral process is beyond reproach. Ensure that the 2019 election is the last first-past-the-post election. By March 2020, we will launch a Citizens' Assembly on Electoral Reform with the mandate to make recommendations to Parliament on an electoral system that would make every vote count. Legislative changes to implement the recommendation of the Citizens' Assembly will be made in time for the 2023 federal election. Lower the voting age to 16, giving young people more say in their future in instilling habits of civic participation. Require all parties to submit their campaign platform cost estimates to the Parliamentary Budget Officer for review. Mandate Elections Canada to develop a truth in advertising framework for elections campaigns that empower the Commissioner of Elections to investigate citizens' complaints related to campaign advertising and impose sanctions if the complaints are found to be justified. Intergovernmental Collaboration Canada's constitutional division of powers between federal and provincial levels of government, together with the constitutional protection of Indigenous treaty rights and our adoption of the provisions of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, both enable and constrain the federal government in setting national priorities. We need a mechanism that convenes all governments to discuss and decide upon issues of national importance. A green government will support the model of collaborative federalism, working with and ensuring fair treatment for provinces, territories, municipalities, and Indigenous peoples by establishing a council of Canadian governments to set higher order policy priorities with the goal of policy coherence to optimize public spending. It would include the federal government, provincial slash territorial governments, representatives of local orders of government with large city mayors and smaller and rural municipalities and indigenous, First Nations, Métis and Inuit governments. This is similar to one in place in Australia. The role of municipal order of government. This part of the platform is labeled with a sustainable development goal, sustainable cities and communities. Around the world, cities are taking leadership on critical issues such as climate change, immigration, and refugee protection. Canadian cities are hobbled in this respect because the 1867 constitutional designation of the municipal order of government as creations of the provinces severely limits their autonomy and authority. With only 10 cents of every tax dollar flowing to municipalities and no direct powers of taxation, vast inequities in our governance structure and financial stability have been created. Successive governments have skirted the issue. There is no appetite for reopening the Constitution. Prime Minister Harper, quite rightly, made the gas tax a permanent form of municipal taxation. The Trudeau administration has also made some progress on funding housing and transit infrastructure. These have helped to stabilize municipal budgets, but it is still insufficient. Give municipal governments a seat at the policy-making table through the Council of Canadian Governments. Encourage the use of city charters, which give greater autonomy to cities. Make changes to the Canada Infrastructure Bank to reduce interest rates to municipalities on loans for infrastructure projects. Institutionalize federal transfers to municipalities through the creation of a municipal fund, renaming the gas tax funds, which were delinked from gas tax revenues years ago. Ensure a doubling of current funding to ensure predictable and reliable funding to municipalities. Allocate 1% of GST to housing and other municipal infrastructure on an ongoing basis to provide a consistent baseline of funding. Justice Reform The criminal justice system criminalizes far too many Indigenous persons, members of visible minority communities, and people suffering from mental illness, homelessness, and addiction. The adversarial family court system does not address the needs of children 
and families experiencing the trauma of divorce and separation. The civil justice system disadvantages those who cannot afford lawyers. A green government will implement a justice reform agenda that will increase access to justice and fairness in Canada's justice system. Develop a clear framework for the use of Deferred Prosecution Agreements (DPAs) and require the Director of Public Prosecutions to report on any negotiated DPAs in her annual report. Implement recommendations of the McClellan Report for a clear written exchange of views to avoid some of what was inappropriate in the SNC-Lavalin matter. Eliminate mandatory minimum sentences and enable the courts to determine appropriate sentences based on the circumstances of each case. Pass legislation to eliminate solitary confinement that fully coheres with decisions rendered in the courts of British Columbia and Ontario. Reinvest in prisoner rehabilitation and preparation for reintegration society, especially for Indigenous people and women. Ensure illegal handguns are intercepted and kept out of our cities. Redirect Canada Border Service Agency CBSA, resources to weapon smuggling and reduce pursuit of people living in Canada without proper residency but who are otherwise law-abiding. Launch a confidential buyback program for handguns and assault weapons. Reform the process of record suspensions for simple possession of cannabis to maximize fairness and accessibility for marginalized communities. And review the process of record suspensions as it applies to other offenses. Reform the policy, legislation, programming, and funding framework for Canada's superior courts so that civil and family justice services become much more accessible to Canadians following the precedent set by British Columbia and the United Kingdom. International Relations and Defense Multilateral institutions through which sovereign nations talk to each other collaborate on regional and global initiatives and attempt to resolve disputes are all under immense strain. Commitments to multilateralism are weakening with potentially serious consequences for global stability and security. Canada's long-standing commitment to multilateralism builds on Lester B. Pearson's legacy as a Nobel Peace Prize laureate. A green government will support such international engagement recognizing that isolationism and nationalistic jingoism create a dangerous path and must be vigorously resisted. We will strengthen Canada's role in promoting peace and global cooperation. International Development This part of the platform is labeled with the sustainable development goals of No Poverty Zero Hunger Good Health and Well-Being Quality Education gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions, partnerships for the goals. International stability rests on all nations being able to provide their people with basic needs and security. These are articulated in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Re-establish the Canadian International Development Agency, CEDA, that was dismantled by the Harper government with a mandate to provide overseas development assistance where it is most needed. Eliminate the requirement that aid be tied to Canadian business interests overseas or strategic geopolitics. Increase Canada's overseas development assistance budget to reach former Prime Minister Pearson's goal of 0.7% of GDP, which Canada has never achieved, but which many in the donor group of our allies have already surpassed. Ramp up our national contribution to the Green Climate Fund and Global Environmental Facility to $4 billion per year by 2030. Review federal government policy to align with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals 
and develop a mechanism to track progress in meeting these targets both at home and abroad. Foreign Affairs and Security This part of the platform is labeled with the Sustainable Development Goal, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions. The security and defense of the nation is a fundamental responsibility of any sovereign government. Not since the end of the Cold War 30 years ago has global security seemed so precarious. Contributing to this is the disruption being caused by climate change, referred to by military analysts as a threat multiplier. This will only worsen as the Earth heats up, including Canada. The Green Party is committed to building and keeping peace, including post-conflict work to strengthen civil society and democratic institutions around the world. We are committed to expanding Canada's peacekeeping role internationally. At the same time, we are fully aware of the dangers of militarism and the need to defend against it both at home and on the global stage. We support the United Nations doctrine of the duty to protect and refuse to place corporate interests ahead of ethical action to protect vulnerable populations. The Green Party understands that Canadian Armed Forces personnel are appreciated worldwide for their degree of training, quality leadership at all levels, and for the can-do and cooperative attitude they bring to international operations. Canada now needs a general-purpose, combat-capable force that can provide realistic options to the government in domestic security emergencies, continental defense, and international operations. This includes protecting Canada's northern borders as Arctic ice melts. A green government will ensure that the Canadian Armed Forces are prepared to serve in both traditional and new capacities. Ensure a consistent capital investment plan with stable funding so that service personnel have the equipment and training they need to fulfill an expanded mandate. This includes naval and coast guard vessels that can operate in the Arctic Ocean, fixed wing search and rescue aircraft, and helicopters. Normalize the deployment of military personnel to protect civilians and communities from extreme forest fires, flooding, and storms caused by climate change, and new pollution threats in Canada's north. Sign and ratify the treaty to abolish nuclear weapons. Ban autonomous weapons and work for a global pact to make them illegal. Cancel the contracts to provide Saudi Arabia with armored vehicles and ban importation of Saudi oil. And that's a wrap for this episode and forward together the 2019 Green Party of Canada platform. We covered the Green Party vision for good governance and international relations and defense. Now to get this platform for yourself, you can go to greenparty.ca slash platform. And to look up who your local Green Party candidate is, go to greenparty.ca slash candidates and just put in your postal code. And that's all of the 2019 Green Party platform. That's right. That's the whole thing. I really hope that this was a great way for you to learn about the Green Party of Canada's vision in the upcoming election. That being said, the one thing I hope for all Canadian listeners who can vote is that you do just that. Please, get out and vote on October 21st, 2019. Our democracy works best when we all take part and do our part every election by voting. This has been a really fun project for me. While it hasn't been easy finding time on my evenings and weekends to put this together, it has been tremendously rewarding. This is the first time I've made and published a podcast, and it's been great learning so much. And I think it probably won't be the last one I make. I hope this has been fun for you as well, and that you've been learning about the Green Party of Canada's 2019 platform. I am so grateful for the amazing support I've had putting this podcast together. Most importantly, thank you to my wife and kids for their patience and support while I've been in my office working on this podcast. A huge thank you to my dear friend Adam Tambo for his support and guidance on the inner workings of making and publishing a podcast. 
I am also deeply indebted to Carrie Copley, who reviewed every episode before posting to the podcast. You really helped make this project get online so much faster than I could have done on my own. Thank you for helping catch mistakes, and of course, I am responsible for the remaining mistakes. Thank you to Carla Doak, a longtime friend and broadcast professional, for her sage advice and awesome coaching. Thank you to Janelle Bascom for your enthusiasm, joy, and endless cheerleading for this project. I'm so appreciative of the advice and support I received from Brandy Davis, Becky Smith, and Mike Schreiner as I worked on the concept and format of this podcast. A big thank you to Phil DeRosier for your support and expert advice when I first brought up this idea last week and asked you what you thought of it. I'm so grateful for your friendship and generosity. And a big shout out for our music, a track called Atlas, which is made available by a non-commercial free music license through Filmstro at filmstro.com slash music. And last and most importantly, thank you to you. Thank you for your time and attention, for your interest and curiosity and your willingness to learn and be an active part of this election and the direction of our country. I hope that this podcast has helped you as you're deciding how you will vote this election. I agree with Elizabeth May's observation that this might be the most important election in our history. The Green Party is working hard to share our vision for Canada in 2030, and we hope we're able to earn your trust and earn your vote. Thank you for listening. We'd love to hear from you. Email us at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com and make sure on October 21st, you get out, stand up, be counted, raise up your voice for the Canada you believe in, and vote. I'm Sean Yo. Thank you so very much.